spoiler alert, I record these videos a day in advance. If you haven't seen it already, check out the YouTube philosophy adversity advice video I made earlier today. If you're somewhat of a creative person, I think it would be very interesting to take a look and listen to that. But initially, we weren't going to talk about this topic at all. I just saw this province article come out a little bit earlier after I already pre-recorded today's second video, so I said, hey, why not record a third video on the day and release the video I recorded previously tomorrow on April 1st. Let's talk today about a player who I really wasn't expecting to be in any sort of headlines at all throughout the past few days. It's Nikita Tramkin the Vancouver Canucks overager defenseman that they drafted in the third round in the 2014 NHL entry draft. And yeah, overager, I said it right there. That's a little piece of information that most people don't actually retain when thinking about Triamkin. The fact that when the Canucks did draft him in 2014, he was already an overager by two years as well, which is really, really weird. But Nikita Tramkin is in the news today because this province article, written by Ben Kuzma, has a whole bunch of quotes from Todd Diamond, the agent of Nikita Tramkin. Now this article is a great read, I recommend you definitely go down in the description below, take a look at it, read it in its entirety because Ben Kuzma does a great job summarizing the points, talking about Tramkin as a player, etc. But what we're going to be pulling from this article is the quotes from the agent himself. But before we do that, I want to get into the profile of Nikita Tramkin, actually talk about what kind of a player we're dealing with here. Because Nikita Tramkin is a guy who has been one of the more polarizing Vancouver Canucks people. I was going to say prospect, but then I realized he's not a prospect. He's 25 years old and he's got like 80 games of NHL experience. This is a guy who is pretty much noteworthy because he is 6 foot 8, 254 pounds. As probably the biggest defenseman in the Vancouver Canucks system, that's something that's incredibly fun to look at. Even a Tyler Myers isn't as big as Nikita Cheramkin is. And when you take a look at that, you can instantly see the appeal. Tramkin, to me, has always been a guy who shows a lot more potential than he is willing to give out. And that's a really weird little comparison to make, but I think it's something that reigns true. When Nikita Tramkin first suited up for the Vancouver Canucks, and this was all the way back in the end of the 2015-2016 season, I remember being at the Vancouver Canucks game the game before he made his debut. It was a game against Winnipeg, it was a home game in Rogers Arena, and my friends and I, we were in grade 10 at the time, we were watching the warm-ups, we went down to the lower bowl, and we saw this big hulking number 88 on the back of a defenseman. Nikita Tramkin was out there on the ice, but unfortunately, he didn't play in the game that we watched. He was just out there for the warm-up, he ended up playing the next game. Throughout his first season, and only season, with the Vancouver Canucks, Nikita Tramkin was a guy who, to me, could legitimately keep up. For a big guy who was 6'8", 250 pounds, he legitimately had the wheels to be able to keep up with the speed, but to me, he wasn't necessarily a guy who was driving a play. A guy who the play would start on his stick, and it would go towards the end and result in a goal. This was more just a player who could break up play in transition, send things back the other way, do a few hits here and there, even though that's not really the style that he wanted to play. It was mostly just Willy Desjardins who wanted him to play that way, and it didn't really work out too well, which is part of the reason why he left in the first place. But after he did leave, he played a little bit more in the KHL. He had some really good seasons. His first one with Avtomobilis Yekaterinburg after the Vancouver Canucks saw him get 25 points in 51 games. But as the seasons went on, he got less and less points. 11 points in 41 games, 11 points in 58 games. Let's go over onto the Todd Diamond quotes to talk about just exactly why this happened. From Ben Kuzma's province article, Todd Diamond says, Tramkin's style and his game are more suited for the NHL than the KHL. I believe it will be an easy transition, and having been there before, he kind of knows what to expect. 
He knows what's going to be demanded of the coaching and training staff, and he is committed. He never lost hope. He's got a lot of pride and always wanted to come back to Vancouver. This is probably the right time because you want this unit to grow together. So from this, we can kind of gather the same information that has been spewed out left, right, and center throughout the past like two years pretty much. In a scenario where Nikita Tramkin's contract, which was supposed to be expiring at the end of April, is expiring technically now because the KHL suspended their season, Nikita Tramkin plans to come back, and that was always the plan. He wanted to come back to Vancouver, he wanted to be an NHLer, and he wanted to play in this city. So, there you go. It's all but confirmed that he is coming back, and to be honest, I'm really not surprised. The rhetoric that we've been receiving over the past two years has always been, oh yeah, he wants to come back. He wouldn't be opposed to coming back. Tramkin himself was always in the Canucks Instagram live streams commenting and saying hi to the fans. But when it comes to his production in the KHL and how that actually slowed down, Todd Diamond said the team made big changes at forward and he was not as aggressive rushing the puck because the team was lacking offense. He changed to fit the style of the team. That's growth. He just understands himself better now, Diamond says. Now, I don't personally know how the team not being as good offensively means that Triamkin can stop sending out breakout passes. I don't really see the connection there, but hey, you know, if he's willing to use that as his argument, then feel free, Mr. Todd Diamond. I'm just bringing up my own personal doubts about that. But there are indeed a few other quotes here that I think are really, really, really... Juicy, let's just say. The big issue, and it talks about this in this province article as well, that Tramkin faced was coaching. Coaching the way that he played the game and the inability, well, actually not the inability, more like the unwillingness to go down to Utica and play in the AHL. Tramkin's contract had an out clause where if he was sent down, he could just yeet all the way back over to Russia. And that, for the most part, is what he did. Todd Diamond spoke about the contrast between Vancouver and Utica in regards to Nikita Tramkin and his hockey home next year. Do you see how much interest there is in him every day in Vancouver, Diamond said? I don't think people would have interest if we were talking about a player for the Utica Comets, and I don't mean that disrespectfully at all. So, pretty much the idea that he's trying to give out is that Tramkin probably, is going to be just an NHL guy. A good old NHL player. In fact, when it comes to the same qualms that we had about Tramkin in the NHL, the coaching, etc., Diamond said that the coach, Travis Green, is demanding but fair and is doing a good job and can work with young players. And same with the defensive coach, Nolan Bumgarner. It's night and day from where it was at the time, at that time being when Triamkin was with the team before. We know Triamkin is not Quinn Hughes, but he does have a skill set for a man his size. He can handle the puck, and he's pretty mobile. Now, there are other quotes in this article, but I can leave you to reading that here. But pretty much what I'm gathering from these quotes here, if what Diamond is saying is 100% true, and it's not just an agent trying to pump the tires of the guy that he represents, then he's making a really good pitch, I'm gonna be honest. It really makes me want to see what this guy is capable of just hearing the way his agent is talking about him. But obviously, it's his agent talking about him. He's going to... You know, I'm not even going to go there. He's just going to talk about him in the best way he can. Let's just say that. And the way that Triamkin has been developing, sure, the numbers definitely do bring up a concern, but the context of the team around him, the context of the development, it definitely does say to me that there probably is something to look forward to, if anything. And obviously, I'm not going to look here and say that he's not going to get a chance or that he shouldn't get a chance but I just want to, you know, calm the expectations down, see if he's able to tango, and if he is, then we'll keep him up, 
maybe trade away a, I don't know, a Ben or whatever. I really have no idea what we're going to do there, but we'll see. Once the season starts back up, once the next season starts back up, and the Vancouver Canucks acquire Triamkin, then we'll see. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Go read Ben Kuzma's article. It'll be linked down below in the description. Social Social 99. And bye.